Lying. As soon as I stop giggling. My name is Justin Lloyd, and I'm going to teach you about software development and computer science. Data structures, we would say, are foundation knowledge of computer science, and data structures about how you store data in a computer's memory. It would be no exaggeration. It would be no exaggeration to say there are literally hundreds of data structures for different purposes. I'm moving around a lot because I'm nervous right now because, again, it's practice of another. On a daily basis, you're only going to need a tiny, tiny handful of actual data structures out of the hundred. You really should learn as many data structures as you. you won't use them all in your entire career, but having an understanding of those data structures and how they work and how they relate to certain problems will allow you to approach only have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. If you only understand how linked lists work and two-dimensional arrays work, then everything has to be solved with just those tools that you have. But if you understand about how queues work and decks and stacks and difference lists and sorted arrays, all of a sudden you have access to a lot of extra tools that you can do to do your job. In a modern game engine, you will actually have access to almost all of the data structures, all of the common data structures that you're gonna need on a daily basis. There will even be ones that you don't need. And there are many off-the-shelf libraries you can download from various places such as GitHub. There are data structures I've used in games and most games I've written over the course of my lifetime have used arrays and linked lists and queues and stacks and then there's that one game that comes along where you need something completely different wrote a word game plays much like bookworm and I stored my dictionary as a tree that's spelled t-r-i-e allows me to store a huge multi-million word dictionary a very small amount of memory if I didn't compress it in that way then I would be using 90 megabytes to 100 megabytes of RAM but I was actually able to store store it in just a few megabytes, which is a big difference on a cell phone. A number of modern languages out there, JavaScript, Ruby, Python, C Sharp, C++, as venerable as it is, that support a rich set of data structures as part of their standard library. C++ doesn't come with a lot of data structures out of the box, but it does come with the standard library, and then you can use the STL, the standard template library, there's the Boost library, and a whole bunch of other off-the-shelf libraries bring C++ up to what we consider to be a modern standard. You would get out of the box with modern languages such as Python and Ruby and JavaScript. There are some data structures that are more suited to certain tasks than others. If you wanted to quickly search, searching for a particular value, you might store it in a sorted array or a sorted list or even a hash. If I was storing a large dictionary of words, I would store it as a tree. That's T-R-I-E again. Because of that, I'm able to store individual letters and word components rather than the individual words themselves. So searching through those words, when I was searching through the actual game board where all the letters were laid out, I used that as a connected graph, which is another data structure again. Start at one letter and I would then look to see what adjacent letters were there. And there are some data structures that are better suited to certain tasks than other data structures. If I'd used an array or a linked list for that, computational time would have been astronomical. Newth is literally the treatise on modern data structures and I've read it cover to cover at least once. I'd be lying if I said I'd read it cover to cover twice. And I've implemented every algorithm in there uh, back in the 1990s. You look at these data structures and you think, holy crap, when am I ever gonna use this? But they have a very, very specific use case. Out of the hundreds of data structures that are available, I've probably used only a few dozen out of my entire career. SPQR trees used once, long, long ago. There are just so many data structures that I just don't need. Every game out there has probably only ever used 20 data structures total. The hundreds, literally hundreds of data structures that are available. Game development probably has never used more than 50 or 60 of them. If I only improve the rendering algorithm, or if I only could push a few more thousands of polygons, if I shave some polygons off of this 3D model, or I optimize my AI routines, or unroll this loop, I rarely, if ever, start with the micro-optimizations, a very simple data structure change. And that will give you a big performance boost because let's say you have an array with a thousand entries in it and every frame you're looking for a particular entry with a particular value in that array. So you start at the very beginning of the array and you sort through it. You scan through the array until you hit the entry that you're looking for. That can be very, very slow because you have to go through, say, if in best case scenario, you would hit element on the first one you look at. Oh, I'm looking for uh, uh, an enemy with only 10 hit points or less in the very first element, but you might have to scan every single element right down to the bottom. That would be terrible. And whether it's an array or a linked list, it doesn't matter. Use a sorted array or a sorted list, that would be better to keep the array sorted. So that's a performance hit right there. Whereas in a hash map, 
you wouldn't take that performance hit like you would in a sorted array because the hash map will self-sort. I should be able to answer these. You should, you wrote them. <laughs> <laughs> mm, never assume that just because someone is using a particular data structure for a particular problem that you should also use that data structure. I basically repeated your question back that it was a statement rather than a question. You do not need to implement most basic data structures these days. In fact, I would completely advise against it except as a learning exercise. I've implemented compilers over my career, both as learning exercises and professionally. That doesn't necessarily recommend, mean that I recommend anybody else do so. Very interesting and valid things to practice with, but, and you should have a wide base of knowledge but there are so many off-the-shelf libraries that have had thousands, tens of thousands of man-hours put into the implementation. They're, they've been bug-tested, they've been optimized, but 99% of the time, you're just gonna use the standard off-the-shelf stuff that has already been implemented by somebody else. Yeah, I've written linked lists, I've been asked to write linked lists, I've come up with data structures that are completely custom for my problem that I'm trying to solve, but I would say on a daily basis, I rarely reach for a custom data structure that I've implemented these days. Have you implemented a doubly linked list in the past two decades and could you still do it? But only as an interview question, because the past two decades is actually the last time I did a doubly linked list as an interview question was 2004. Absolutely 100% write your own data structures, even if they're a duplicate of the straight up data structures already built into the language or the API. If you have a specific use case, there's going to be times when either the built-in data structure, they're either going to be not optimal, or they're going to have a bug, or they're not going to quite work the way you want. They're going to use too much memory. The insertion is going to be too slow. There's going to just be that edge case where it just doesn't do what you need. I just wrote a piece of software that I just used completely off the shelf data structures for C Sharp, I used the .NET API, everything was just boilerplate. It didn't perform optimally, but runtime wasn't an issue. We have to worry about memory because I had a machine with lots of memory. I didn't have to worry about runtime because it was only going to run once and it didn't matter whether it ran in 10 minutes or whether it ran in 10 hours, so long as it ran and produced the correct results. And programmer time to solve this particular problem was more costly than runtime. They didn't need the result until a week later. So it wasn't worth me sitting there optimizing it with a better data structure. There are very smart people writing data structures. There are very smart people writing data structures, spending thousands of hours that debugging it, writing unit tests. And if you do use a data structure library that you found on GitHub or NuGet, please do verify that it comes with full unit tests because there's nothing worse than finding the one data structure library that you want that solves your problem perfectly. You download it, you put it in, everything seems to be going fine, and then you've got an esoteric, hard to find, takes you four days to track down a bug just to realize that the bug exists in the data structure library itself. If you ever, ever use somebody else's data structure libraries, Make sure it comes with a whole bunch of unit tests that test that data structure. I fail in that regard. When I write data structures for myself, obviously I'm not writing very many unit tests. If I'm writing a library that's going to be used by other people in unknown circumstances, then yes, I'm going to write a ton of unit tests. Always look for open source libraries or closed source libraries that have unit tests that go with the data structures. All modern languages, C Sharp, Ruby, Python, Swift, and JavaScript all ship with standard out-of-the-box data structure library. The specification of languages often extends to the specification of supporting libraries. You can see this in .NET and .NET Core, the Java libraries. In the more controlled languages, Java and C Sharp, you're going to find that the specification is for the language, the compiler, the syntax, the grammar, and then what the standard library must support. The new C++ specification, C++ 11, they now have started to specify what has to be in the standard library. Yes, yeah, since modern C++, uh, starting even in the 1990s, but the more modern C++, C++ 11, C++ 14, and so forth, provide both the standard template library and boost library and there's a massive overlap in functionality between those two libraries so really at that point it's pick whichever one you're comfortable with please leave a comment if you have further questions about data structures not mentioned send me a question if <laughs> send me
Damn it. <laughs> Send me an email if you have a question about data structures at justin at justinloyd.tv. That's justin at justinloyd.tv. Send me a question if you got <laughs> Send me an email if you got a question. I promise not to spam you <laughs> or add you to a mailing list. And leave a comment in the comments below of how many data structures you regularly use in your software development. There are two videos, one here and one here, and you won't be able to click on them because they haven't been posted yet. That you should watch for more information on data structures. <laughs> <laughs>